So let's talk about the uh, stuff you've done outside of the business. Uh, what charity organizations or volunteer work have you done outside of wrestling that you'd like to share with us? So the I actually got my uh, first big job outside of college. I guess your first big boy job was working with the YMCA as a, an aquatics director, or I guess you could say um, aquatics director, aquatics manager, pool manager kind of role. Um, so that entails, you know, training your lifeguards, hiring your lifeguards. Um, if you ran swim lessons, hiring your, your swim instructors, and then, you know, running the programming too. Generally, I worked for a YMCA, so they always kind of had the programming in place. So it was more or less just kind of ingratiating everybody into the programming and running the programming. Um, but one of the things that I loved about this job, especially working with the YMCA, is being able to help those communities uh, at large that are at need or don't get the um, resources that every other community will get. Um, so here in Colorado, I worked with the YMCA at Boulder Valley. Um, I worked over in Boulder, but we had um, branches in Boulder, Longmont, and then one in um, Arapaho as well, or Lafayette. And one of the really cool things that we did as a company is we provided swim lessons for um, at-risk youth or students who wouldn't necessarily get swim lessons um, because they can't, they don't have the financial resources to do it. So we did some after-school programs, and then we also did some too where we would bring the kids in during the day, maybe if they had a break or like if they had like a gym class instead of going to gym, we'd bring them there one day a week. And we would teach those kids, you know, safety around water, some some basic swim lesson stuff, so not like a full-on, you know, like build you up to swim team stuff, but at least safety around water, how to swim in the water and be safe and stuff like that. And, and basically just encouraging them to like, hey, this is a safe space to come and learn. And, you know, you don't have to be afraid of the water. We can teach you how to be safe in it and how to be safe with others around water as well. Oh, that's really good. The Y definitely has just amazing resources and just great instructors that are willing to work with you and help yep. teach you how to do certain things, whether it is swimming or working out, exercising. It's just a, a very positive environment to be a part of. How long were you working there for? So with the Y total, I had probably been working with them. Um, I, I I left my last Y position to be a web developer in 2021. So I worked with the Y, oh, I, man, um, from 2007, when I got my first lifeguarding license up until 2021, I, I worked with the Y. There wow. was some sprinkles in there working um, maybe with like a, a city for a little bit as well, doing maybe a summer outdoor pool. But generally speaking, especially in the winters, because the YMCAs were usually the only places that had big indoor pools that were open in the winter. That's always where I was at during the winter helping out. And I'd imagine during COVID it was probably tough as well because all the indoor stuff was shut down. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, I was actually working at the Denver JCC. I had been the program manager down there when everything got shut down. Um, that was kind of a big transition period in my life. Um, I loved my position. I loved working, um, cultivating a team and building a team aspect of that stuff too. But one of my biggest gripes with the position, especially with lifeguarding is it's just not taken seriously enough and they don't pay the, the guards as much as they should. Hmm. Um, Why so do you it was think one that things, is? I just think that uh, tragedy is ultimately the teacher in that industry and a lot of communities don't see the inherent need or why lifeguards are important until something happens and then it becomes present of like oh why weren't we funding this or why weren't we taking this more seriously um <clears throat> i got in a really lucky position with the ymca here in boulder like i said they they valued their guards a lot they paid them a very good fair wage and as a response to the lifeguards that I had were some of the best guards that I've ever had. You know, they were very responsible. They showed up to almost every in-service and they wanted to learn their skills. They wanted to stay on top of those life-saving skills, whether it was CPR, working with an AED, even down to the basic first aid stuff. They wanted to be on top of that stuff because they wanted to be ready if an emergency was happening. But you can only really get that and get those people that want to be in that position if you're paying them the money that they deserve. Um, <clears throat> like when I worked in Ohio, a lot of those guards only made like, seven fifty to eight dollars an hour so a lot of the time you're only getting high school kids uh, high school kids don't necessarily always take the job seriously that that doesn't mean not not all of them i had some high school kids that were that were wonderful guards and they did a great job but you do get those kids too that are just think that it's going to be coming and sitting in the sun and just kind of watching people swim and you kind of kind of break them in maybe through that first lifeguard training or those first joint services to realize like hey this is a lot bigger than just sitting in the sun yeah. and catching a suntan it's serious. I mean, yep. think about like some of the people that have drowned and nobody was there to really rescue them or save them. Uh, it's just awful. I mean, uh, 
you know, Shad Gaspard yep. uh, lost his son out to sea and he went and tried to save him. And, you know, it was just, it's tragic. It was tragic and all that's, around. That's the thing that a lot of them don't understand too, is a lot of the times that the person that is making the rescue is the person that drowns and not the person that was like in trouble at the start. Um, so being able to kind of tell those stories too, we have plenty of stories that you get in lifeguard training mail that you can reiterate to them kind of explaining like, Hey, this is serious business. So if you're not ready to a risk your life or be ready to, you know, save someone with CPR or something like that, then maybe it's not the business for you. 